This is narrated from a woman's perspective who was nearly swallowed by a whale with her friend. I live with my husband, Tyrone McSorley, in San Luis Obispo, California, about three miles from the beach. Every few years, humpback whales come into the bay for a few days while they migrate. November 2020 was one of those times, so we pulled out our yellow double kayak to watch the wildlife. We paddled the length of the jetty and saw seals, dolphins, and about 20 whales feeding on silverfish. We watched in awe as these graceful monsters, each about 50 feet long, distorted and sprayed through their blowholes. We laughed as they turned their side fins so it looked like they were waving at us. My friend Liz Cottrell was staying with us at the time. The next day I asked her if she would like to go out on the water. No way, said Liz, now 65. She was not an experienced kayaker and was terrified the kayak would capsize with hungry whales surrounding us. There's nothing to worry about, I assured her. The ship is stable and we can return any time. After some coaxing, she finally agreed to join me. I didn't want her to miss out on this amazing experience and regret it later. Liz and I hit the water at 8.30 the next morning. There were already about 15 other kayakers and paddle boarders in the bay. It was warm for November, about 65 degrees, so we wore t-shirts and leggings. After half an hour we spotted the first whale just behind the jetty, two humpback whales were swimming towards us. How wonderful to be so close to a creature so large, I thought as the whales dipped below the waterline. When whales sink after breaching, they leave what looks like an oil slick on the water. I thought if we paddled to that place we would be safe from the whales as they had just left. We watched them from a distance, or what I thought was a distance. I later found out that it is recommended to keep 300 feet away. We were about 60 feet away. Suddenly someone was throwing at us. A tightly packed school of fish, known as baitfish, began jumping out of the water into our kayak. Their movement sounded like breaking glass all around us. What was supposed to be a comical moment was actually terrifying. Their actions meant they were escaping the whales, which meant we had to get out of there too. But before we could paddle to safety, our kayak was lifted about six feet out of the water, secured by massive jaws. Liz and I slipped out of the kayak and into the whale's mouth. My body was engulfed except for my right arm and paddle. Liz, meanwhile, was looking directly at the whale's upper jaw, which she later described as a large white wall. As the whale's mouth closed, Liz raised her arm to stop it from being crushed. I felt the creature begin to sink and had no idea how deep we would be dragged. Still, I didn't panic. I kept thinking, I have to fight this. I have to breathe. Whales have huge mouths but small throats. Whatever they can't swallow, they spit it out. That included us. As soon as the whale dived under the water, it ejected us and we popped back up to the surface about a foot apart. The whole ordeal only lasted about ten seconds. Several kayakers were paddling over. One was a retired fireman who asked us if we had all our limbs. We thought you were dead, he said. We weren't, of course. But I am much more aware of the power of nature and the ocean than I was before. Liz was shaken, comparing the ordeal to a near-death experience and says her whale-watching days are over. But even she had to laugh when she got home that afternoon and realized she had brought a souvenir. When she took off her shirt, six silver fish fell out. <laughs>